I speak first to the residents of the future Livingston Shire. In preparing your budget, we were very much guided by advice and projections from the QTC report and advice from Queensland Treasury. The base case in the QTC report prepared prior to de-amalgamation was simply our forward projections for the entire region divided into two parts and hence your rate rise is that which we were planning for the whole of the council. Um, before we go any further, you'll get this word for word, uh, tra uh, tra it's already been prepared as well for you. So we're using the base case from the QTC report. Um, this was also the model for the de-amalgamation proponents. The Livingston community will receive a 4.3% rate rise in general rates for this budget with 5.3% for utilities. There are no new long-term borrowings on behalf of Livingston. We have drafted a full capital works list, some $23, $24 million, of which half will be delivered prior to the 1st of January. The remainder will be delivered or altered by the incoming Livingston Council. In accordance with QTC's recommendations, we have not sought to address the cost of de-amalgamation nor the implications of de-amalgamation in this budget. Instead, we have put those expenses on the bank card and the new Livingston Council will bring down a mini budget to cover the first six months of its operation and must address these de-amalgamation costs in either its first or second budget. We have taken every decision as fairly as possible and in good faith, recognising Livingston's desire to be separate and respecting that. So the budget that I'm bringing down today, or that I am presenting to the community today, is a budget in two parts. There's 12 months of Rockhampton Regional Council and six months of Livingston. When council passes its budget resolutions, it will actually be as one budget, but a bit lopsided uh, in two parts. So uh, the long-term financial plan always had the rates rise this year is 1% above the council cost index, and that is what we use um, for Livingston Shire uh, for their six months. We will um, also be passing appropriate resolutions that would let the new Livingston Shire send out a second rates notice, the one in January, February, if something goes terribly wrong with legislation. At this stage, the government is proposing to have um, legislation in place that would let the Livingston change the rates and send out its own rates notices um, in January, February. So we're just covering off in case something goes wrong. There's uh, $24.8 million in total works, including $1.25 million in reconstruction works from uh, Oswald. Uh, there's a significant water mains project at Emu Park and the reconstruction of Matthew Flinders Drive. So, so that's Livingston. It is very much a caretaker budget, as um, we have been advised to do. The uh, continuing Rockhampton Regional Council budget is by no means as straightforward. If I were to choose a fairy tale to symbolise this budget, it would be one that tells of victory um, in the face of obstacles. It would be one that tells of hard work and making good. Without the measures we have taken, and I will discuss these shortly, this council, the continuing Rockhampton Council, would have run out of cash in a little over two years' time and been in a long-term deficit position. This, however, is no longer a risk, nor is the dire financial situation that was looming. Sir Winston Churchill tells us that kites rise highest against the wind, not with it, and Rockhampton Region will do so. There are a range of measures addressed in this budget. We have delivered the first surplus since amalgamation. This budget returns Rockhampton Region to surplus. This is a, an outstanding, um, incredibly important aspect of the budget. 
And if I had a wish about what the headlines would be tomorrow, it would not be 8% rate rise, it would be Rockhampton Regional Council is in surplus. Many of the measures that have um, been taken into account by QTC when they projected that we would be weak with a negative outlook have been addressed. And we look forward to the QTC review later this year and hope and believe that we will return to our moderate rating. I must point out that this has not and will not come without some pain. We will, however, move forward and prosper. There are a range of things, some of which I've already talked about in the public domain, that have put us on this great trajectory. The rate rise for the average owner-occupier is 8%. For our commercial properties, it is 10%. The graph that is here shows you what would have happened if we had not put our rates at 8%. That was the, the line that allowed our cash to remain constant and not go out the door backwards, remembering that by 2017, QTC was saying we'd run out of cash. If we hadn't raised our rates, they were projecting 16%. Um, we have made cuts and our rate rise is 8% and our cash is, is constant. The red line is what would have happened if we only left, for instance, with the 6% rate rise. So the, the 8 was really what it had to be. Commercial properties will typically see a 10% rate rise. This is higher um, than was planned prior to de-amalgamation, but of course it's a lot less than the 16% that QTC had suggested we do to balance the budget. Pensioners will receive an extra rebate of $50 per year or $25 per half year. This should offset the negative impacts of the higher than anticipated rate rise. Incorporated seniors groups in each population centre will also now have access to a local community hall or facility at Peppercorn rates to allow seniors programs to flourish. The owner-occupier rate um, is being introduced with this budget. It's a new general rating ca category for non-owner-occupied residences that we're introducing. This brings the region into line with most regional centres and the state's densely populated southeast. Rockhampton's average property in this category is still lower than all but four of those, and if we look at Mackay, Townsville and Gladstone as examples and assume that their rate rise is around 5%, this is how we compare for our investment properties. So Rockhampton is still a solid investment option for those who are wishing to purchase investment properties. Community clubs and sporting groups will receive an additional rebate to assist with their council rates bills. There's a lot of good going to come from a modest investment of $75,000 from council. In response to community concern, council will reintroduce quarterly tiers for the payment of water rates. This will mean that big bill in the final quarter will be avoided. This budget sees a range of measures across all aspects of council as we have trimmed and paired and cut. The feedback from the community during the Your Budget, Your Choice sessions gave clear direction about the community's willingness to see significant change. Some examples include reduction in training and conference allowance for staff and councillors. The provision of refreshments for councillors during meetings has been scaled back or suspended. We've, we will establish a process to encourage donations at the zoo. We will introduce paid car parking at the rear of Pilbeam Theatre on most days, also paid car parking on the site of the former Grosvenor Hotel. 
We have reduced the COIN budget. That's the technology centre by $100,000, but it is still able to continue to provide the services that the community loves. There will be um, some fee for those services. There will be changes in the way we manage several of our key community facilities. These include Archer Park, Bohemia House, Scotia Place and the Showgrounds. The users of these facilities will not be disadvantaged. There will be further discussions about future staffing levels across the organisation as the deamalgamation process progresses. We will advance a relationship with Propel to deliver effective and efficient customer service and back of house administration as the relationship matures. We've completed a review of our HR section. We're also in the process of reviewing our road design, construction and maintenance and the Propel relationship will take that one step further. We are delivering still a significant capital works program but it is scaled back to live within our means. Now I never thought as Mayor I'd be delivering a program that actually cut back on capital works. But we've taken $5 million out of the roads program and $1.5 million out of our water and sewerage program to bring back the uh, scale of our budget to allow us to achieve that surplus. This budget gives us a picture of what it like, looks like for Rockhampton Region to live within its means. There are modest additional borrowings for this year, about $6.5 million, and for next year there will probably be some additional borrowings, but I plan to be able to deliver a budget without any new borrowings for the financial year after that. We will undertake further investigation of the potential for a flood levy bank to protect Port Curtis and Depot Hill. Public consultation will take place over the next few months. We will investigate options for the airport and this will also take place over the next few months. Options will be considered from, you know, do nothing, corporatisation to a sale. Can I stress again that this budget is the budget that shows us what it looks like to live within our means and we can stay in a holding pattern, delivering surpluses and gradually paying off our debt or the community may choose to free the future and to, uh, to take some action to uh, swap airport or part of the airport uh, to reduce debt. I met this morning with volunteers at the Heritage Village we will begin a transition of the Heritage Village to it being run on a community management model. I envisage something similar to the management of a community kindergarten, still with paid staff who answer to that management committee. The process with ongoing council support beyond that um, will take two years and then there will be an ongoing uh, support, funding support. Council is engaged in two projects to make sure our own development assessment processes are as sharp as they can be. We're engaged in a planning health check pilot program as well as a concept to construction development assessment innovation project, uh, one with the Department of Infrastructure and State Development and the other with LGAQ. All of this is about council taking monumental steps to ensure that our services are as efficient and proactive as possible. There will be significant reductions in funding for Capricorn Enterprise, who will, from January, provide only tourism services for Rockhampton Regional Council. We will be investing very significant dollars and energy in an in-house economic development, which will take us in a progressive and uh, forward-looking uh, new direction. There's a significant reduction in funding for CQLGA, which will be scaled back to a council of mayors. The in-house economic development, which I mentioned earlier, will be very much focused on the big picture, and we will have funds set aside that will allow us to encourage development in the right places as well. 
We are continuing the Capital Works program at the Gracemere Industrial Area that will allow that area to achieve the potential that it needs to for a healthy future for the continuing Rockhampton region. In years past, councillors were able to direct the shape of the budget prior to its presentation to the public. This meant that the Mayor was in the position of presenting and being responsible for a budget that he or she did not always support. Indeed, I voted against at least one budget after having presented it in my previous term because I was so violently opposed to borrowings that were being taken. What is different now is that the legislation requires a process that shows the community the budget that the Mayor is comfortable with in the first instance. It was the Minister's deliberate strategy, as he saw it, the Mayor is the one who is held responsible come election. Councillors now have the option and full authority to change the budget in any way they wish. I've already told them that I accept and encourage them to make the budget their own if they are not happy with this one. They have seen how the budget came together through multiple workshops. Council staff are now at their disposal to make any changes. As most of the things taking effect for the continuing Rockhampton region don't take effect until the 1st of January, may I request that Livingston councillors please allow a pass through of the measures that the continuing Rockhampton region is taking to ensure its own financial future. I commend this budget to you. There are difficult things in it, but everything, every decision here is one that I'm prepared to stand by as having been taken for the long-term good of our regional community. I am proud of the uh, direction financially that we are taking to bring a budget into surplus in difficult times is extraordinary. And I thank the councillors and the staff who have just been amazing as we've worked through this process, senior managers, the staff in finance, um, I'm an early childhood teacher, I don't do the sums. Um, so I, I stand here with work that's been provided by a broad range of people in our, uh, across our organisation, but presenting it to the community as one that is the right direction for us going forward. This is the end of the bad news for the continuing Rockhampton region. We are in surplus, we have funds to direct our own economic future allowed for in this budget and we have nothing but good news ahead of us. Thank you.